Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the new paneling tools in Dynamo Sandbox. For those that don't know, Dynamo Sandbox is a free version of Dynamo that you can download from the dynamobim.org website. This gives us functionality to be able to test the latest versions of Dynamo and the new tools that I'm about to show you will soon be in the full version of Dynamo and Revit. Looking into the node library here, you can see that we don't have a Revit library. As I've said, this is uh, the Dynamo Sandbox version. But what I do want to show you is under geometry here, you'll now notice that we have panel surface. And in here, we have a whole bunch of panelization tools that allow us to create uh, panelization for space frames, structural frames, and also for architectural uses such as curtain walls and cladding and so forth. So what we're going to do is just take a quick look at that. And we'll obviously need some geometry to work with, so I'm going to just create something in AutoCAD here. We'll save it out as a SAT file, and then we'll bring that into Dynamo. So, just in AutoCAD here, we'll create a simple surface that we can go ahead and use for some panelization. So, I'm going to start by creating like an ups upright here, representing a column, and we'll make that 8 metres high, like so. Uh, we'll have the width of the structure being something like 28 metres, like so. And then we'll draw another line directly down the z-axis, like so. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll copy that back. So we'll use the standard copy command. We'll copy that back down through the y-axis and we'll go back to a depth of 35 metres. And we'll just connect this with some lines, just so we've got the context of the roof. Okay, so this is going to be the roof structure itself, and what I want to do is have a spline uh, going across the edges here. So I'm going to rotate the UCS about the x-axis, like so. We'll create some guidelines in here. So from the midpoint, I'll just have a, a wire coming down two meters. Okay, and then we'll have another wire in between those two points. So it'll basically be bisecting here, and we'll go two meters high. Like so, and then I'll just copy that to the other side. Okay, so we'll do something like that, and now we can create a spline across that. And we'll create a spline across these points. Okay, and we'll finish the command. I can then just get rid of the little um, helper geometries there, and we'll then set the UCS back to its previous state, and we'll copy that spline back through the structure. So let's pop that over there, and then we'll set the UCS at the back face of the structure here, and we'll also rotate that again through the x-axis, and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and mirror this spline about the central axis in here. Okay, just so we've got something a bit more interesting in there. And now you can see that we've got this kind of double curve in there. So, we'll set our UCS back to normal. We'll produce a loft between these elements. So we'll loft between the splines, like so. Okay, and that's now just an AutoCAD surface. So let's now save this as an ACES file. So we'll just type in ACES out. We'll select the geometry that we're interested in. And in this case, I'm just going to save it out to my desktop. And drawing one dot sat is absolutely fine for me. And now we can use that in Dynamo Sandbox. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually allow us to get that SAT file. So under the geometry tree, under modifiers and geometry here, we're going to import from SAT. Okay, so we'll use this node here. And you can see that we now need the um, file path for this. So I'll just do a search for this. Okay, so we'll just type in path. Here's our file path. And again, we'll browse out to our desktop and we'll select drawing1.sat. Okay, so connecting that in here, straight away we can see that we've now got that geometry inside Dynamo. So there it is. And we've now got something that we can start to look at the panelization tools on. So looking in here, you can see this is already a surface in here. So now let's go to the panel surface tools and we'll start to take a look at some of these here. So let's begin by looking at something that perhaps might be quite useful for a structural frame. So in here, I'm going to try um, by diagonally split squares. So we can see here that we have the um, input for a surface. And then we can control the number of U and V values. So 
Let's go ahead and use an integer slider for that. Okay, we'll set some limits up here. So we'll have a minimum of four and perhaps a maximum of 25. Okay, and we'll plug that in here. Okay, and we'll do the same actually for the U and the V value just in this example. And straight away now, you can actually see we have panelization. Okay. Now, another quite nice thing with this is you can see that we have quite a few other tools in here and they all work in a, a similar way. So if I bring out this one over here, let's just have a look at what this one would produce for us. So we can just change the wires over like so and we'll let this run. And we can now see this configuration over here. Now you'll notice we also have an addition here of a boundary condition. And looking down underneath the uh, panel surface submenu, you can see we've got a separate area here for the boundary condition. So I can decide whether I want to keep or remove these. So if I keep the boundary conditions inside here, sometimes what you might find is these conditions then actually bleed out through the edge of the um, structure. So of course it's quite nice sometimes to then be able to keep or remove those. So that's the idea with this. Let's try some more of these um, setups. So we'll try the hexagonal one. So I'll just delete this one over here. And again, we'll wire into the hexagonal one instead. Like so. Okay, and again, we'll give it a few seconds to generate, and there it is. Now, you can see here, going back to what we were saying before, that this now has uh, hexagons that are going outside of the boundary. So in this case, I might want to actually remove those. So we'll go to the remove option inside here. So we want to uh, remove. Okay, and we can now see that's all nicely cleaned up. Now, what's really nice with this, and actually I'm just going to switch back to my um, cross split squares. We'll use that node to demonstrate the next piece. So we'll wire those back in. Okay, we'll let the dynamo remove those. So there we are, we've got this uh, this geometry here. Now what I quite like with this is it's really, really easy to go ahead and get the panel points or the panel polygons and so on. So here, if I wanted to actually get a load of polygons out of this, I could very simply wire in the panel surface, the indices are already kind of mapped for me, and I can now see I actually have a polygon representation for each of those panels. Now, what we can do with the polygons is as follows. If I go to, for example, curves, and I go to the polygon in here, you'll notice here that we can actually get all of the corners out of the polygons. And of course, by doing that, we then have a structured list. And you can now see I've got groups of points for each uh, panel in there, which again could be useful for placing out adaptive components or uh, similar situations. However, we can actually do that directly within the panel surface tools. So you'll see here that we can just directly get out panel points. So again, if I wire the panel surface in here, and what I'll do here is I'll just hide some of this geometry, we can now see that we've got all of those points. And again, what's quite nice with this is they are grouped together. So again, what that actually means is I could go ahead and use some poly curves in here, and we could generate some poly curves by points over there. And now you can see I've got all those poly curves and then I can get the curves from the poly curve, like so. And now, of course, I could use that really easily for some structural framing, okay? So, you know, that's a really, really nice workflow. And notice here, I've only got two lines per group in there. What I would need to do is connect the first to the last so I actually get a, um, a contained shape. And now you can see I've got three lines per group in there. So obviously that's quite nice. Okay, let's see if we can do something with that then. So what I'll do is I'll actually hide some of the previews in here just to make it a bit easier to see what we're looking at. Um, we'll start to now use some of these curves in here. Okay, so I'll just hide that one in there. So let's now say that I wanted to build some 3D faces on that, for example. Uh, what we could do now is we go in to surfaces, open up surface, and in here, I could uh, either do by perimeter points or perhaps by a patch inside here. So of course, um, the poly curves in there would give me a, the, the ability to see a patch. And of course, now when I zoom in, you can now see that I've got that lovely panelized surface that I could start to use for downstream workflows. 
And of course, being Dynamo, everything is completely adaptive as well. So if I want to reduce or increase the number of panels, I can just drag the slider bar um, up or down. And of course, that will go through and then recalculate all of those panels. OK, and there's the result. So again, let's uh, have a look at that and inspect that in a little bit more detail. Yeah, and there it is. So as I say, this is a bit of a technology preview. Um, this version of Dynamo is only in Sandbox at the minute. You can see actually that we've got um, a repaint on quite a lot of the uh, nodes and tools within Dynamo. Quite a few new features. The biggest one, as I say, which is going to really help um, engineers and architects create frames and curtain walls and things like that, is the panel surface tools. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a good insight into what's up and coming and keep your eye open because I'm sure that will be inside Revit within the next few months. Okay, speak to you soon.